Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post-watershed production. Good evening and welcome to Casino de Large, where the house always wins. Well, most of the time. I am your maitre d', serving all manner of indulgent finger food, and uh, the croupier dealing off the bottom of the deck is my large. Good evening all. Hope you're well. Hope you're well and you haven't lost your shirt this week. Because obviously we live in hard times. We do indeed. You might have to... Uh, you know, Hardest. The, <laughs> the most hard. For God's sake. We started already. Mike, why don't you, uh, why don't you announce what to, tonight's theme is if it wasn't already Abundantly clearly evident. Clear. Yeah. Gambling, children. Gambling. It's something I actively encourage and endorse. Do you? Because you know it's, uh, it's illegal in most US states. It's why don't, why don't you tell us why you endorse it? I was joking. But oh, you were? Okay. <laughs> Well, yeah. you're a bit of a then. We're not just limiting ourselves to legalised gambling or, well, casino gambling, whatever you want to call it. I think Russian roulette. Strip well, poker. That can inc- <laughs> These are my types of gambling. <laughs> That's what I heard. It's most simple gambling, I guess, is a wager where you... Wage? You, you put forward... A, a challenge is put forward to you. And uh, if you if you meet the challenge successfully, then of course you you might win riches or a woman or I don't know what else your life. <laughs> and uh, if you're not successful, you usually, in the legal sense, you might lose quite a lot of money. And in the illegal sense, you you might lose your life. So pretty sometimes pretty, it depends how big the stakes are, really, doesn't it? So be a winner, not a loser. Of course, but easier said than done, Mike. For some. <laughs> Do you gamble often? Well, as you kind of mentioned, there are many forms of gambling. Yeah. It does come in many shapes and forms, and I guess I probably not really though. I, every now and again, I put on the old football accumulator or yeah. stick a couple of quid in a fruity or something. But uh, so not really. I do have friends that I genuinely worry about, though. <laughs> obviously, do you uh, think at its simplest level, gambling is? Well, it's escapism, isn't it? Because the normal way human beings go about things, in our current system anyway, is to exchange money for goods and services. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or at least public services or private services. Let's, let's just uh, illustrate that. I'd like to get my private serviced. <sighs> just just stop, Mike. That's what she just said. <laughs> that's, Boom. What, that's what they all said. But what, did I? What Ask, I me mean? <laughs> oh. Ask me if I stopped. Ask me if I stopped. No, Ask me. time for... It's not the time, Mike. Ask me not if I stopped. Time. Get out. Ask me if I stopped. Sweet, I do. <laughs> Mike, we know you never stop. You never stop when you need to. You, you're usually thrown out of the casino. Don't stop till I get enough. And your wife runs. I don't enough stop. is not enough. I mean, <laughs> the world is not enough. Too, the world is not enough. Too much is not I enough. I don't stop till I get enough. The world is not enough. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, our normal, mundane, everyday existence, our routines, uh, involve us exchanging probably small amounts of money. For either necessities or goods services and services. Rendered. Exactly. Whereas gambling takes us out of that routine, doesn't it, Mike? Hell yeah. Because gambling on one side, i.e., the side of the gambler or the people, say, worried about the gambler's addiction or what have you, the gambler is spending probably an inordinate amount of money, more than he can afford, uh, on, a, on a punt on the off chance that he's gonna, his ship's going to come in. Go have a cheeky punt every now and again, don't you? Well, yeah, but you know their argument is there is you know th- there's actually no end product. There's you shouldn't gamble what you can't afford to lose, children. Well, yeah, that, that, I mean, important that is a message. Point. But what they'll say is there's no end product. You're paying money essentially for nothing. In fact, you're paying money 
for misery because it will eventually cause misery because you'll give away everything you have and no, then you'll be in deep pay, trouble. You're paying money for the thrill. Ah, so now you're talking about on behalf of the casinos and or the bookmakers and or whoever obviously is running the gambling, betting shop, whatever. Because that's what they say. What they say is people aren't giving us money just to win money. They're giving us money primarily to enjoy themselves, to get a, a quick thrill. Well, that's how people would develop gambling. And there's a se- they don't enjoy giving away money. Yeah, exactly. And the secondary consequence is a potential for a big win, right? But obviously, gambling thrives on addicts. You know, that's the lifeblood of the industry. Do you know what I'm saying, though? Oh, I, I know what you're saying. It, to be honest, it's it's a lot like. It's a lot like fast food joints claiming that, of course, they want the whole country to be healthy and they don't they don't endorse overeating or regular eating consumption of their products, especially among children. But on the other side, of course they do, because how, how do you think they make their money? So True story. It's, it's pretty duplicitous and disingenuous. But do you think they have a point, then? Do you think that... Gambling should actually be treated as a leisure pursuit, a, a pursuit of a cheap thrill. I think that's exactly what it is. I mean, it's a, it's a way for so obviously people use it for different things. Some people gamble to recoup losses. Often, losses made gambling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, people do it for just to make you know people that obviously that don't have a serious gambling addiction do it just to make you know say a game of football a bit more exciting for example you know they've got a they've got a bet on the score final score or first goal score or whatever the classic isn't it is if your team is playing say a deadly rival and you're really worried about the result is to bet on the opposition so then no matter what happens you're relatively happy I never bet on the opposition I never no, bet I against know. my team I know it's a gutless thing to do but I see what you mean. You know, like I, I went into, you know, I went into some arcades for the first time in probably years, in, down in Weymouth, and uh, yeah, I went into an arcade, and obviously we're we're talking about we're talking about pennies and pounds here rather than tens of pounds, but you know, I was spending pounds here and there. But even though I got really frustrated and were practically kicking the machines over at the time, you know, when I was all done, I thought actually I had a pretty good time. I, I quite enjoyed it, especially when I I won a little bit here and there, and I, I didn't I didn't go out of there like resenting that I'd lost you know a few quid or or that I'd wasted my time. I did actually uh, genuinely have a good time doing it, and then I I didn't go to bed like tossing and turning thinking shit I have to win that back tomorrow. So That's I get, the harmless it side. is possible it is possible to actually <clears throat> use gambling. For its primary function, according to casinos and... It depends on your personality. It does. I mean, you know, there's the argument I always use that all humans have addictive personalities. It's just which addiction will you succumb to eventually. We've got sex addiction, gambling addiction, drug addiction, drink addiction. All of the above. (laughs) Uh, In your case, yeah. (laughs) So what you're saying, Mike, basically, do you think gambling at its purest... Or at the level it should be, is uh, is just innocent escapism. Yeah, it's harmless fun. But it should be harmless fun. Mm. Obviously, it doesn't work that way. But that's down to the individual. Would you argue that the current capitalist system we live under, though, says with one hand, obviously we don't want any more addicts and what have you. But on the other hand, does everything it can to promote more addicts. Because addicts mean more profits churned into your company. It's in the uh, it's in the Bible and all kinds of other things. Gambling, there is a reason why it was seen as a sin. It's not because some people necessarily lose control. I think the reason it was generally seen as a sin, Mike, is if you look anywhere from the huge chains to the small bookies, their lifeblood, their regular income comes from addicts. They have to have addicts. A bookmaker especially a small little book uh, maker that's not part of a chain it, they they can't make uh, you know they can't make a good living relying on 30 40 50 people coming in once or twice a month having a flutter they need you know they need those core four five six people there all hours of the day 
to to sort of underpin their income, and then obviously the others just bolster it. But you, you have to have regulars, and that's the problem. Is that if you're running as a a business that's chasing profits, you're going to have to have regulars, and things like gambling, and fast food consumption, what have you, they don't lend themselves to regulars. They're not supposed to be a regular activity for anyone. And if they do become regular activity, then it's going to be very negative for the person involved and probably their family. True you know story. I mean? I'm hearing you. Yeah. I'm hearing you. I agree with you again, Rhett. What, oh, wow. What, what is, is growing on? What's growing on? <laughs> well, it, maybe it's time to take a quick break from our... Uh, Ramblings. Our ...analyses. Get your stinking rat out. It's late night large. So, Mike, where were we? Uh, where were we going with this gambling discussion? Where were we growing? Gambling, gambling have stories. You got any, yeah, have you got any funny gambling anecdotes, Mike, that you can think of? Uh, say funny. I'd, uh, off the top Obviously, of, na- names uh, the, change to protect the internet. <laughs> off the top of my head, I can think of something, but I wouldn't really say it was funny. I, I remember one time down uh, a local public house. A tavern. A tavern. <laughs> okay. Ale house. Yes. A certain friend. Friend of mine. Owed me a little bit of money. Uh, 170 quid on fruity. Fair play. Mm. Congratulations. I didn't so much as see a drink out of it. Because <laughs> he put it all back in. <laughs> that, that's pretty bad. I tend to get infuriated about, with people like that. Not this m- much of my business, but... You know what they say, Mike? You, you know, you, you initially... Your, your primary thought when you're paying to gamble is obviously... I'm paying to have a bit of a thrill, you know, make something a little bit interesting for us. Everyone loves paying for a cheap thrill. Obviously, that's what we're all chasing. You're paying for a cheap thrill, a um, little bit of mild entertainment, uh, maybe excitement, but you obviously are hoping for the secondary payoff of, like you say, a big win. Now, if someone is lucky enough to get a sizable win, would would not most people see that as a sensible time to say, that was really enjoyable? And it and it was and it's quite fruitful for me as well, and spend their money on something else they might enjoy. Prostitutes <laughs> get a pretty good one for seventy quid. I wouldn't so, know, that's Aaron. What I'm saying. I wouldn't uh, know. <laughs> no, you uh, you wouldn't get anything for under a hundred euros. Uh, so w- oh, we learn we, something uh, every day. So what were we saying? What well, what basically what I was saying is, is there anything more infuriating than the hopeless gambler? No, like you say, plums all their money and other people's money potentially into fruit machines. Oh yeah, I have another friend. Go on. I shan't name him. Go on. But he's regularly strapped for cash, but he'll put money in fruit machines, and when he's out of money, it's he'll turn around. Can I borrow a pound? Can I borrow a pound? Or you got a couple of quid? Why? Fruity? No, you knob. <laughs> Not. <laughs> no. And then there are other friends slightly more selfish friends that just want to be part of the gambling fun and watch them on the on the free that will say yeah here you go you can borrow you know ten pounds off me and watch them whip it away and that's a ten pound debt then they've the other friends think, it, uh, as, yeah. as, 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 as accrued and needlessly really this, this gambling's is... a harsh mistress oh it's the same as what's that saying about money money is a good servant but a horrible master True I story. Think that, yeah, so probably the same about gambling. I would say, like you say, it's all about it's all about who's in control. Who is in control? Me. Is it you? It's always me. Have you? Is it? Is your hand on the machine? The money runs out, and your hands are leading you away, or is your hand constantly in your pocket, fumbling for change all the time? My hands desperate constantly to shove it in. Constantly in my pocket, fumbling around, <laughs> desperate to shove it in. But <laughs> oh, I asked for that as well. No, that's what she. I said. must stop setting you up for these. <clears throat> so what basically I was saying, Mike, I'm going to take this opportunity to to slag off one of mankind's most diabolical creations, fruit machines. What in God's name is the point? Entertainment. Really, it's it's, it's, an, it's an evolution of like slot machines and things mm. it is I'm just going to take this opportunity to say I don't think there's a much more tragic portrait of human society modern human society than to see a hopeless gambler shoveling money into a fruit machine with people huddled round watching <laughs> seriously I, I can't imagine 
a more pitiful example of where the human race has gone. I think that's probably a slight exaggeration. You can't think of anything worse that, 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 to come from the human race. No, I, I didn't say worse, I said pitiful. Uh, okay, all right. Of course there are worse things. It's it's just, I find it really, really tragic. Now, me, I can see the appeal if someone's playing on an arcade game. Particularly a tricky one, and all their friends are stood around, like, watching how far they get, giving them advice. You know, that's that's like camaraderie. You know, you're, you're, you're giving each other advice, it's bringing you together, you're having fun together. Giving it the big one. Right, with a fruit machine... There's no skin involved. There yes, is. I know there's a bloody secret code as to how to play fruit machines to maximise your chance of winning. But it's it's utter crap. It's just a series of lights that go round. And there's no particular... Shiny lights? Exactly. Ooh, flashing. For God's sake, at least playing Ghouls and Ghosts or something similar. I'm hearing you. You are. I hope you are, because I, I really hate fruit machines. If I was going to gamble all my money away, it would have to be on one arm bandits. Fair enough. Hey, you, you're you're just pulling a lever and waiting for yeah, slots that, to drop. Yeah, but, because but, of course that that's even more luck based than a bloody fruit machine, man. Yes, but the thing is, a fruit machine uh, has is is just a masquerade. It's like, oh look, you have to press more buttons, so there's clearly more skill involved. No, it's exactly the same premise as a one arm bandit. Uh, wrong. Anyway, yeah, sure. Mr. Silly. Fruit Machine Salesman. I'm not spokesperson. Fruit. I don't even play them, really. I only put a couple of quid every now and again. If I happen to notice someone put a load of money in and walk away with nothing, <laughs> I might <laughs> stroll over, <laughs> stick a couple of quid in and see what happens. Good old capitalist system. Taking advantage of other people's misfortune. Uh, when when do you came, get... I saw I grew. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I uh, When do you get a chance, anyway, to, to go to the Fruit Machine? Because I thought... Most of the time you're in the back of the back of the pub playing dominoes or cribbage, backgammon. No, this is true. Every now and again, one must venture to the bar. Yeah, in uh, in between taking a puff on the uh, on the pipe, adjusting your deer stalker, or uh, poking another log on the fire. Indeedy, yes, indeed. Okay, if we're talking about class based, we've dealt with very much kind of working class gambling at the moment, haven't we? Bookies and pubs mainly. Yeah. Right. Should we move up market a little bit? What about casinos? What about casinos? What's your, what, what's your opinion on casinos? I Somebody said to you, a friend said to you, Go on. Mikey, Mikey, uh, uh, I know it's unexpected, but uh, we're getting married, so uh, I've got a stag do in, uh, in Las Vegas. So, you know, you're coming at the weekend and we're going to blow all our money. I'd say <laughs> I can't bloody afford it, man. Ah. I can't even get to Las Vegas, let alone afford to fucking gamble anything there. I say if you're paying, <laughs> I'm going. You pay on there. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. I'd go if I know. could afford it. I'd go. Okay. Definitely, one hundred and ten percent. Are you good at any casino games? You, you blackjack man or? I'm good at everything I try my hand at, Aaron. Oh really? Okay. Name something I'm not good at. Lying. Oh no, that's not true. Uh... We both know I'm a perfectly able liar. So you love Vegas? What, what's your? I'd gen- love to go. What's your general opinion on casinos? I was going to say, is a casino to a bookmaker what a giant Tesco is to an independent grocer? Because uh, we have quite tight casino rules in this country, don't we? Yeah. No, I, I, I like, I like the idea of casinos. I think it, it's just it's the same as any other form of gambling. Yeah. If if done responsibly and you you you're gambling with no more than you can afford to lose. Yeah, but who who enforces that? That's the problem. Like I say, yourself. It's called self-control. Well, you, if you yeah, if you don't have any, might, if you don't have any, then no, a casino is not a good idea, and don't go. This is the problem, though, Mike. Because but if you can if, if you can if enjoy the, yourself, if the person involved wants to gamble all the time, and the casino, of course, wants them to gamble all the time, where's the regulation? You know, that's how it ends in tears for so many people. If you can't regulate yourself. Hey, I'm not saying there's no personal responsibility, but, for instance, I think that a direct result of there being quite tight casino laws generally in this country is that there's not as many gambling addicts as there could be. Think about it. If you live in an inner city, say, deprived area, casino opens up a few hundred yards away. You spend most of the day getting pissed, no jobs going round, 
you spend each and every day waking up feeling you know like life shit going to bed with nothing to show for it this casino opens up across town it's your chance to you know have a little bit of escapism before you know it you've lost your home because you've used like the meagre money you've got plus you've got yourself into debt with all kinds of other people <clears throat> because that's 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 the only thing you see when you get up every day that's your like escapism for the day and that's what it's about isn't it gambling is an escapism now that's fine for comfortable middle class people in fact I'm not going to make this class based because of course middle class people do get addicted as well what I mean is it's more likely for someone with nothing nothing going for them to cling to that bit of escapism just want want to have it all the time hence why you see you know deprived areas have like the most gambling addicts no I, I see what you're saying but at the same time I don't think you can say it's a bad thing because certain people can't control themselves. Look, alcohol. People oh, are addicted my. to alcoholism. <laughs> that ruins their lives. Mm. What? So. So what? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be allowed. It's it's uh, I, it's evil because like some say, people I, can't I, control I, themselves. I personally think all drugs should be legalized. There you and go, and if if drugs are prohibited, then why is alcohol not prohibited? Both can ruin your life as much as gambling. Exactly. Yet, yeah, you you judge them. No, no, no. What I'm saying on like different. Is, yeah, but it's all about judging cause and effect, isn't it? Because Ex explain to me how they're any different. Okay. Do you know what? I'm just going to come out with this statement that's going to sum it all up. All right. I know we we take these themes, we take these themes, we deliberate them to death. We sometimes disagree. A lot of the time we come to the same kind of conclusions. There's always a connecting factor when something turns bad. Now, if we lived in a utopia, there would always be people with problems. Because, like I say, humans are addictive characters. But the vast majority of problems in this country are caused by inequality. If you had people... If everyone had a guaranteed base level of survival, income, to be able to buy the very basic things in life to stop them living in squalor or rooting through bins or what have you, you would see social problems almost eradicated. Not, I say almost. They'll never be completely eradicated. What I'm saying, Mike, is, like you say, there's a few people who can't control themselves. Yes. Then there's another few who would be able to control themselves, but their social conditions have dragged them down to a level where this is you know they cling to this as an escape from their conditions see what I mean like for instance yeah okay if you said in a perfect society a hundred people went into a casino right how many of them would do you expect would develop gambling addictions maybe ten less than that less than that less than ten yeah I'd probably agree maybe five or six out of the hundred three or four you think only three or four percent Okay. No, I'll go with that. That's in a perfect society. In our society, I would venture that it would be over 10. Possibly approaching 20. I... I... Can't, no. You're saying... You're saying a fifth of everyone that goes into a casino has a serious gambling problem. I didn't say serious. It's not necessarily... Well, it's there's not a different problem. levels of serious. Something can be a problem without it... a serious problem. You know, someone can realise that they're. If it's kind not of serious. Getting... It's not a problem, is it? Really? So you're saying if, if there's it, the, if, there's only black and white between not having a problem. If, at if all. I if I religiously go gambling every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, but not in a serious way, and no, I no, no, and no, I don't, it, and not, I, I'm addicted to doing it, but I don't lose more money than I can afford to lose, then it's not a problem, is it? No, it's a problem. It's not a serious problem. Once you start losing money, you can't afford to lose. And people say, try to get you away from it, but you ignore them and continue. You can be That's a, a serious problem. Yeah, but you can be addicted to it without it being a serious problem, is what I'm saying. Yeah, OK, I'd agree. I think we basically came to the same conclusion. My, my basic point was uh, it, inequality, the so social conditions exacerbate bad situations. So it's the same with most things. Well, how do you mean? Well, well, whether it be gambling, drugs, alcohol. Yeah, social conditions will make things worse. If, if yeah, 
if you're in dire straits and in horrible conditions or whatever, you're obviously going to cling to these things more. Absolutely. So how can you judge gambling differently to how you judge alcohol or drugs? I wasn't. Oh. I, I, I was judging it exclusively on its own. We're now going to just have a, a quick gloss over some other forms of gambling. From but, our sponsor. From our sponsor. We have, Mike, emotional or physical risk-taking where the risk-return ratio is not quantifiable. I'm not quite sure exactly what that means, but examples that they give when gambling in that sense would be things like skydiving, campaigning for some kind of office, political office, asking someone on a date. <laughs> that's quite interesting. So that's that's not so much gambling as taking a risk. <laughs> Adventure. No. Where you, you invest yourself in something, Yeah. and there's a... There's a, a higher than you would normally get average, higher than average chance that you will be unsuccessful. I would hope I, not skydiving. But... I, I, yeah, I don't think that's what it's saying. Go on, what is it saying? Smart ass. No. Claws away. Return can't necessarily be measured by anything, necessarily. For example, asking someone on a, out on a date may have various different outcomes and <laughs> levels of reward <laughs> levels of reward I like that I think you know okay. what I'm saying and mm. to say that you're less than likely to succeed yeah, okay, I'm going to say that. you know you, you need to be talking for yourself there because uh, <laughs> oh. oh. obviously the large one sees okay. the large one gets that's it right. I see it I rut it that's it uh, I wouldn't bet on that so, I bet he would. insurance. I wouldn't bet on that. <laughs> insurance, is, insurance is often uh, insurance is often referred to as uh, kind of legalized gambling. Of course, it isn't traditionally like gambling because, as has been uh, as was explained in in this uh, definition, the reason insurance isn't considered gambling is because gambling uh, you're paying like we say for the primarily for the thrill, secondarily the chance of winning insurance there's not really a thrill what you're paying for is the prospect of something going terribly wrong and having compensation for that eventuality so that's why it's slightly different although insurance can be described as like you say trying to make sure you have a no-lose situation and the example given which is what we discussed earlier is where you bet against your own team particularly if say you're the coach of said team because obviously you're not going to have a good time of it financially if you're losing all season or you're losing that game or whatever but it can be balanced out by winnings potentially winning so yeah that like betting each way basically making sure whatever happens you're not too out of pocket mm. uh, situations and, and of course gambling you know there's a very mild and uh, and f fun form of gambling or, or charitable form of gambling obviously if you're buying a raffle ticket for something a tombola or what have you for a cause where the return is a secondary reason you might not necessarily buy a raffle ticket to uh, win you might buy it just to support the cause I would also I would also suggest that pretty much no one other than maybe children buy raffle tickets because they're excited about the prospect of winning me personally whenever I buy a raffle ticket I pretty much throw it in the bin because I buy I buy raffle tickets from the the like Lord, the Lord Jersey League send out oh, yeah. every bloody year. I know. Um, have you ever seen anything for that? I just do it to support the club. I don't. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's no other reason. I'm, it's basically like making the same it, chance of actually winning. Anything. Yeah, it's like it's like putting uh, some money into a charity box. Only you've got a very very slim chance of winning a mediocre prize. So there you go. <laughs> what else we got, Mike? Growing. Gambling and of course, yeah, they they talk about financial transactions, which of course. It's one of the things that got us in the mess we are in now. And, I mean, a particular bugbear of mine is in here. Securities derivatives, such as options or futures, where the value of the derivatives depend on the value of the underlying asset at a specific point in time. So this is where we get speculation and financiers gambling on the prices of assets at a certain period in time, which is socially completely useless and would otherwise be known as casino gambling, which, as we all know, only stands to be positive for either the person you're gambling with, i.e. the casino, or your personal self. Whereas, 
the gambling of financiers and speculators actually has tremendously bad after effects on the rest of society. So there you go. Potentially. Potentially. Well, we've all seen what happened. We're all living what happened. <laughs> Mike is talking about problem gambling. Okie doke. Yeah. Which we've already mentioned. We have. I have. You have. Surely Russian roulette is the uh, cl- is the finest possible example of problem gambling. I try to play Russian roulette at least three times a day. I've heard you play uh, the Russian roulette where you all get your cocks out and um, whoever ejaculates first wins or loses. Oh no, sorry. There's six six guys sat around a table. I know most of you don't want to hear this. But when Mike gets together with his five mates, <clears throat> the six guys get around the table, flop it out, and basically start beating the meat. And whoever's the last one to uh, ejaculate <clears throat> has to drink the reproduction fluid of the other five members. Of course, that kind of gambling is a strange kind of gambling because there's nothing positive to win, really. It's just <laughs> you play it lose. just for the prospect of watching one of your mates drinking your semen. So that is what you win, really. Of course. You win the thrill of laughing at someone's humiliation. <laughs> but oh, boy, oh boy, do I love <laughs> to humiliate. To be honest, Mike, I've heard that it's usually you losing, but I'm sure, I'm sure those are just unfounded rumours. I think Although you, you well know by now, Aaron, that I <laughs> endeavour to never lose at anything that I do. Although you, Losing is not an option. Although you don't get a lot of other protein in your diet, so I can assume that you do lose most of the time. I get protein in my diet, thank you. <laughs> Obviously, I wouldn't have guns like these without it. Thank you. So, basically, when I was talking about that, discussing that game, I was also alluding to another form of gambling that we're going to talk about, because so far we've been talking about gambling in which you wager usually a sum of money in order to win an extraordinarily much larger sum of money, hopefully, or a prize of some kind. What we're going to discuss after the next track is actually the prospect of making a wager that's a lot more serious. And on the other side, a comical wager, pretty much similar to what we've uh, been discussing, where you're not actually wagering something necessarily positive for yourself, but having fun and potentially having something bad happen to you should you lose said wager. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. I said, hey, what's growing on? Welcome back. That was the uh, Charlie Daniels band there with uh, The Devil Went Down to Georgia. Personal request of mine. Loving those fiddles. I bloody love to fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> not Top fiddler. Not needed, but uh, very Always much, needed. very much maligned. So what were we talking about, Mike? We are talking about gambling. Growing. In the ser- Okay, let's, let's go back to the comedic form of gambling. Which is uh, making a wager in which uh, you're not no, you don't have a prospect of a big prize, but it's it's a wager in return for something potentially humiliating or bad to happen to you if you lose. So you're competing pride against friends. If you win. There you go. Yeah. An example, Mike. Do you think is is truth or dare like gambling? Is that that kind of game? It's a bit of a risk sometimes. There you go. Yeah, and and you play this game again. You you play this game not for the prospects of a big win you literally just play it for the thrill and you Normally hope not drunk. losing yes and hopefully not losing as opposed to desperately hoping to win so you have those kind of games Mike can you think of any other comical examples of gambling like I said Russian roulette <laughs> oh yeah hilariously funny uh, Doggy biscuit. <laughs> yeah, that's quite similar to the one we uh, we were discussing that you and your mates love to play. That you invented. <laughs> that I invented. Uh, what what else have we got? Like, it, it, pretty similar to truth or dare. You, you know, you make a wager with someone. I bet you won't do that. And it's usually something retarded. I bloody will. And ridiculous. <laughs> and I will always do it. Of course, Mike will, especially when he's intoxicated. I and bet I will always succeed. I bet you won't drink. You know, my afterbirth. Mike says, just watch me. And I always succeed. And the funny thing is, Mike never asks for anything in return. <laughs> just just the like, the pride of being able to be seen to go through with the bet and uh, and have something horrible happen to him while everyone laughs. The important thing is I didn't lose. Or did I? <laughs> <laughs> or did I? Well, it's a good point, but 
th- these are the kind of funny but th- usually around students young people drunk people these are the kind of stupid wages that happen when you're very intoxicated you don't care about winning you just want to humiliate someone <laughs> use your friend sometimes you just want to see who's got the bigger cojones yeah and it is always me potentially people in case you're wondering like for instance do you remember that time when uh, you, you, took your, you took your pants down and you started running across the field and uh, somebody bet me that I couldn't hit your ass cheeks with a crossbow bolt and I gave you a head start to be fair <laughs> I did slow down for you <laughs> to try and ensure that uh, you would <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun night wasn't it <laughs> oh alcohol <laughs> <laughs> my friend my companion your secret lover my secret lover your sodomite my sodomite my own worst enemy yes your 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 progenitor and your destroyer indeed so we've already had a lot of fun tonight mike but now we're going to turn to the slightly seedier side of gambling because well, we, we haven't really we haven't really touched upon it yet have we oh i've touched upon most things oh well that's the case for the courts but <laughs> We've talked about problem gambling, bookies, uh, you know, people having problems at casinos. What we haven't talked about is uh, underworld-style gambling. The good shit. The gambling that comes with bad, bad repercussions for the people involved. I'm talking about stuff you might see in casino. Not casino. Stuff you might see in uh, Goodfellas, Scarface, that kind of gambling. Where you gamble with people... Oh, okay, Guy Ritchie film. <laughs> the kind of gambling only fools do because, say, they're wannabe gangsters and they play with the big boys and all of a sudden they've lost, like, a card game and they owe a mafia kingpin £100,000. They've got a week to pay it off. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know the one. I know the one. Let's talk a bit about this then, Mike. Grow on. What do you think the motivation is for people to get into these stupid scenarios? It's the thrill, isn't it? It is the thrill. That's that's when you've got a serious problem. You're willing to endanger your, possibly your life just for that cheap thrill. But of course... If it comes off, it comes off. Brilliant. <laughs> but if it doesn't... You in shit, son. And can I just say, why would anyone want to win? You're talking about gangsters here. Would you? Would They're just going to kill you and get exactly. it back anyway. Exactly. Would, would, would you? Would you want to? Would you want to win lots of money off them, knowing that they probably knew where you lived, and uh, they would be ready any second to wipe that glowing smile off your face? Had access to your wife and children. Exactly. Shuddered to. If think. I know where you live, never win money off me. I would. Oh God, I'd venture to say that possibly the only people who'd be foolhardy enough to do such a ridiculous thing would be hopeless drug addicts. Would yeah. you agree? Or other Cause gangsters. What? Why? Why would you? Why would you risk your personal safety and health? Such a horrible, horrible bet. Unless you had no other choice. Yeah, no other choice, or you felt like you had no other choice. What a sad, sad situation. <sighs> Thanks, Elton. But what we're <laughs> saying is, Mike, there are. Glad worth... you got that reference. <laughs> of course, there are. Other, there are things worse than death. Would you agree? Oh yeah, there's lots of things worse than death. For instance, life. <laughs> yeah, touche. No, you were right. But what I mean is, uh, if you lose a car game and you're told if you lose it, you're probably going to be shot in the bang. penis. Okay, that's bad. But bang, you're out like a light. You don't really know much about that. Hell, it was a throw. Now, <laughs> if you're playing with gangsters, what's more likely to happen is you've lost. Where's the money? I haven't got it. Okay. Beat the crap out of you. Take you into a back room. Saw both your feet off. Burn your genitals with a blowtorch. Peel the skin off your face. And then just like, I don't know, dunk you in a in a steel drum of acid. Or feed you to their dogs. You know, do you really want to go through that? I've been through it. Twice. Same Adam. Yeah? Yeah. It's funny because I always say you uh, you smell like you came out the back end of a dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course I haven't been through it. There's not a gangster alive stupid enough God. to uh, to try the hand with me. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen? Uh, have you seen? I, the... I, I gamble with gangsters. <laughs> Nothing happens. You know. No. I, you I just win to another wit. song recently. We yeah. all heard. Gone. You, know, you win some, lose some. It's all the same to me. 
Touche. You've been with a few uh, gangsters, missuses, haven't you? Indeed, I have. You just have a few enemies along the way. Yep. But here I am. And yet, (laughs) untouched. Yep. Unmolested. Wow, go that far. (laughs) Limbs and bowels still intact. Yep, still got a pretty face. I am, some say lucky. (laughs) I say, (laughs) lucky. (laughs) (laughs) Not that lucky, though, Mike, because your ship still hasn't come in. You haven't won the big one. And, of course, until you do win the big one, you're not going to stop puffling. Well, every day I'm puffling. None of us are, because by puffling, we are we are gambling. And to be fair, capitalism is a bit of a gambling system itself. You're, you, you know, you're gambling every day. You're gambling on getting that job you want. You're gambling on getting that woman you want. You're oh, gambling no, no, on... no, I don't gamble. <laughs> it's not a gamble for me. Like I said, I see it, I rut it. Oh, okay, well, aside from that bullshit... Is it? I'm just going to finally say this rather distressing and defeatist statement that I consider the system we live under to be far more gambling than accomplishment. I think to get where you want to be, it's all about gambling, and you're more likely to lose than win. Life is full of risks. That's, That's a good word. Yeah, risks. I personally think that the uh, the rewards uh, don't uh, aren't worth the risks most of the time, and I think most risks come to failure. That's but often the case. It's not to say we shouldn't still try. You can still malign a failed system without necessarily just I don't know shooting up in a drug den somewhere. Well, that does sound like fun. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Anything else to add tonight, Mike? Um. Some words of wisdom. Go on, Emperor. Ah, now then. No, as I said before, gambling is fun, children. It's it's something that if you can do so, you can, sensibly, you know, you, you can enjoy and have fun with it. But don't gamble what you can't afford to lose. And if you do and you're getting shit, come find me. And I'll uh, I'll get them nasty men off your back, and you know, onto your me. back, and uh, not really onto my back. I'll scare them off. <laughs> okay. And you know I'll sleep with their their wives and eat their children and possibly and, eat their children. And I, I'm gonna I'll end on I'll end on a very wise quote from a brilliant man. Oh, thank you. Whoever man. whoever he might be, who I believe said that a good gambler is someone who leaves the table with their dignity intact and their money in their pocket.